The Backrooms, born through a creepypasta 4chan thread in 2019, the series that captivated the silent world behind the silver screens, merging animation and reality into an illusion that bloomed into its own untouchable style. The Backrooms is the spine of the renewed analog horror scene. It's the slow burner of the genre. The story is still fresh and is still gathering speed, whereas other notable series have long finished or simply sunk into the old same template and died off. In this video, I'm going to provide you the lore, the story so far, and why The Backrooms is the greatest series on the internet at current. So sit back and enjoy. All right, so the lore. Um, the lore behind The Backrooms is, is as such. An organization, Async, that's very closely linked with the US government, is funded by the US government, uses low proximity magnetic distortion to essentially establish a door into a space between space that is large and empty. It's just a large empty office space. Once they had established this link, they began to send exploration parties into the back rooms. The intention of these small parties is to map this huge place for a plethora of reasons, from commercial to scientific. As things progress, it becomes clear that the back rooms contains levels, and hidden within these levels are cryptids. When contact is made with these creatures, async employees don't do so well. So, what's the origin of the backrooms? Well, in 2019, 4chan came up with the idea of a liminal horror. Accidentally. Initially, it was simply a call for everyone to share strange liminal images, twinged with nostalgia. Then someone decided they would post a picture of a yellow office space. And this picture stirred the madness and infested the minds. This image picked up traction quickly. The concept of the backrooms grew in complexity and spread to Reddit, where before long people designed and implemented the horror aspect of this world. The backrooms was started on 4chan and developed on Reddit. However, it wasn't until a certain person found this story that it really blossomed into what it is today. Into what it is famous for today. Kim Parsons is the brain behind the Backrooms YouTube series. He is most probably a government psyop. He created the channel Kim Pixel in 2015 and used it initially to upload short experimental animations. When he had mastered animating, he caught wind of the Backrooms concept and decided to create the most astounding YouTube series on the internet and at the most effective time in modern history. This culmination of the rejuvenation of a genre and the absolute pathetic state of everyone made these videos explode in popularity. From the first video in January 2022, he has amassed over 2 million subscribers. His work has been mimicked by thousands and featured by many well-known individuals. And just recently, he has accepted the opportunity to partner up with the major production company A24 and produce a film based off of the backrooms. Not bad for an 18-year-old. So now we've had a brief rundown of the law and the, uh, where it came from. I'm just going to run through the story so far, and it goes as such. The series begins with a bunch of young people filming a horror film. They decide the first take isn't cutting it, and take two. In the process, our perspective cameraman trips and falls, traversing through the ethereal fabric into the nightmare that is the back rooms. Throughout this excursion into the ether, we witness written messages scratched in either ink or blood on the walls, after running through the yellow liminal maze of yellow walls and pillars, eventually our tour guide comes into contact with an unexpected tall, thin, hostile creature. In a spasm of fear, he runs for his life. He hides. He thinks he's safe. Seconds tick by and the silence is all-encompassing. He is alone in a place where the lights don't turn off. Then, like a screaming train, the silence is split by the appearance of the thin creature. Cut from hell, our Taurus falls through the fabric between two worlds and into a free fall through the sky towards Earth. The camera survives the fall, thus explaining the video's title, Found Footage. We're next introduced to Async. On the 2nd of July 1988, 
the Async Research Facility tested a low proximity magnetic distortion machine. This machine was like a gateway through to the back rooms. This was the third experiment conducted by Async, and just so happened to be the one that caught the attention of the US government, who were asked to fund further research into the backrooms project. It was pitched to be the fix to a lack of space. They could sell space inside the backrooms, and in an ever-shrinking world, this floated the US government's boat, and sure enough, they paid in. The gate was opened, and just like the layer of weird milk on top of a microwaved hot chocolate, the film between worlds was removed. Gradually, more and more minion men were sent into the void, and slowly and surely, humanity began to bleed into the backrooms, expanding their infrastructure beyond the gate. These explorative groups use a red ribbon to guide them from whence they have come. As time subsides, they explore ever further, and as they do, they face more and more adversity, from holes in the floor that take you to a pitch dark death to huge lanky monsters that chase you until you die. One of the mighty minion men's bodies is recovered from the backrooms and he looks like a turtle that's been hit by a truck. Throughout the explorations into the backrooms, often external objects are randomly present. One great example of this is the appearance of a crashed car. This is due to the initial ideology behind the backrooms. The idea essentially is, things can no clip out of reality and into the backrooms such as car accidents and even people. This essentially is what happens in the beginning, if you remember, when the cameraman falls over and subsequently ends up in the back rooms. One of the funny yellow men disappears in the back rooms and is presumed dead, but eventually turns up. Seemingly unscathed, they lock him away for a while as they run tests on him and it's discovered that he is healthy both mentally and physically. However, he does eventually seem to mentally deteriorate sketching crude images and showing, quote, schizophrenic signs. This could be because they have him locked up for a few months while also telling him that they are going to let him go while never really, you know, seeming to let him go. But it doesn't really matter because eventually he does snap, stealing a gun away from one of the guards and breaking free. He doesn't get far, however, before he trips down a hill and bumps his head, killing himself. Um, from this point on... Not much more is known. It was after this point in which it was released, Kane Pixel will be working with A24 to create a film out of this series, which is pretty cool. I personally can't wait for that film. <laughs> and so what's left after all that is the back rooms. Theory turned to legend. The great thing about all analog horror is the depth of backstory. Whole worlds are created to feed what's required in order to make an exceptional story. This case is no different. To take an idea, add to it, and build a career that far surpasses it is amicable, and we as a community should uplift motions such as this when the unique opportunity arrives. Whenever you see someone on here take flight with great passion and an idea, remember there's enough hollowed out people who through bitterness would rather see that person fail. Don't empower void, you get no return for that, and you end up losing integrity. Get behind them, support them, and fuel them. Do it for the spirit of man. Do it in spite of this world's wound of toxic confusion. Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Bye-bye.